Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to show you a quick demonstration on limiting reactants. I'm going to show you visually how we can tell if we have limiting reactants and then also show you the math behind some of it. Uh, hopefully by the time we're done you'll see why chemists use stoichiometry in order to actually do some of this stuff. It saves us a huge amount of time. So a quick review for limiting reactants. Uh, is we need to know what a limiting reactant is. So remember, a limiting reactant is the ingredient, it's the reactant in a chemical reaction that runs out first. So we didn't measure things correctly, or we just mixed a whole bunch of stuff together, or whatever, and one of those reactants runs out. And what that means is that limits, determines how many times the reaction can happen. The other thing in there is your excess reactant, and an excess reactant are the other ingredients or the other reactants that are leftovers. We had more of those than we needed, and the reaction stopped because something ran out and some of those are left over. Uh, so today the reaction that we're going to do is the reaction of magnesium metal uh, with hydrochloric acid, that's HCl, and when it reacts it produces a salt, magnesium chloride, which stays dissolved in liquid, and it produces hydrogen gas. Um, so what we're going to do today is, if you see my screen here, uh, in each of these containers, in each of these three flasks, I have 25 milliliters of liquid. So you can see there is a little bit of liquid in here. That liquid is the HCl, the hydrochloric gas. In each of these balloons, we have magnesium powder, and the amount of magnesium powder is given to us on the tape. So I have 0.3 grams in the first balloon, 0.6 in the middle one, and 1.2 grams of magnesium in the third. The problem with this reaction is you can see it reacting, but it doesn't have any colors or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to our reaction what's called an acid indicator. So the one we're going to use is litmus. Litmus is an indicator that changes color based on whether or not acid is present or absent. So what the first thing we want to do is we want to look at what is the acid going to look like if there is acid left, or what does the indicator look like? So I'm going to put a squirt or two of indicator into each of these containers. Again, each of these has 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride, HCl, which are all different ways of saying the same thing. So they all have the same amount of acid in them, right? And when you see that, this indicator, if there is any acid in our liquid, it will have that pinkish, reddish color. Okay? Now, think about this. As this reaction happens, okay, the magnesium powder that we're going to add is going to react with the HCl. And when we're done, we don't have HCl on our product side. However, that's only true if we have enough Mg to react with all the HCl. So what we need to be looking at is what color will this liquid be in these containers if there is any acid left over, any of the HCl. Now, I already have the magnesium powder. I put it in the balloons. One, I'm using balloons because it'll trap the gas. Two, it's an easy way for me to add the powder without making a huge mess. So here's the first one. Hopefully that won't pop off, but we'll, we'll see. Here's the second one. See, that one's reacting a lot more. It has more magnesium. Again, keep in mind, all of these have the exact same amount of acid in them. Okay, I'm going to move my camera view here. You can see, okay, mix them up a little bit. We still have a bit of that 
reaction happening. First one now looks like it is pretty much done, right? Second one, so I'm going to hide that, is also pretty much done. And third one, still really, really cloudy. But now notice here what we see. According to what we had, if there is litmus in our mixture that is in contact with acid, what color should it be? It should be that pink. And notice the first one, what must still be left over in our container? It must have some acid because it's pink. And the second one, it's less pink, but there is definitely a pinkish tinge to that liquid. So both of these must have some acid left over. Well, this last one here has kind of a purplish hue to it. It's totally changed color. Well, what does that mean? That means all of the acid has been used up. That litmus, when we added the litmus, when it has no acid to come in contact with, it has that purplish color. So, what do we do with this? How can we tell what is the limiting reactant? Well, when we look at the reactant side, if there is HCl left over, any HCl left over in our containers, right? Any HCl, it should be pink. So which ones have HCl? Well, the first one must have HCl in it, and the second one must also have HCl in it, what must have run out? Well, there must no longer be any magnesium powder. There is no more magnesium in either of those. Why? Well, because they turned into their products. We created magnesium chloride, which is colorless, and we created hydrogen gas. That's why the balloons inflated. Now notice also the size of the balloon. We can also look at the products. Okay, hydrogen is a gas. Well, looking at this, we can see that the amount of gas produced is different in all of these. And the reason for that is because more reactions happened. Okay, so this tells us in these two containers, magnesium must be the limiting. Because if it runs out, there isn't any of that left over. Okay. And in this one, it's the exact opposite. There's no HCl left, but there must be some magnesium left in there. So this then is the excess and then the HCl is what limits. Okay, in the first ones what must be the excess? It must be the HCl because there is HCl left over. That's what excess and that's what limiting means. So there is an experiment that visually shows you how that happens. But let's look at the math. This is why we would actually